Welcome to the By Design Radio Program. My name is Dr. James Pretty and of Pretty in Healthcare and PrettyinHealthcare.com, where health literacy is the key to longevity. And as long as God has us on this side of eternity, my show is designed to help educate you and your families to feel better, function better, and live as many quality disease-free years as possible. Thanks for joining me this week, and Merry Christmas and soon-to-be Happy New Year to everyone. May God bless you and your families this upcoming year. As we uh, conclude the year, this will be my final show for 2013, as uh, next week I am going to do a rerun because I'm taking a week off. So, um, I have a couple of things I'd like to share with you today. We're not going to do a new topic today. We're going to wait until 2014 and kick off with some uh, cool stuff on uh, headaches. And I'm going to be doing some shows on arthritis. But I figured, you know, a week before Christmas, talking about headaches and arthritis may not be exactly what you guys wanted to listen to. So uh, Luke 137, for with God, nothing is impossible. And as we end the year, you know, reflecting back upon the year, becoming, you know, a bit nostalgic, as I shared with you last show, um, I went through my shows and just looked at the titles that we did this year and really can't believe, you know, ran through, you know, 50 or, sh- 50 or so shows with you guys, uh, digestion, immune systems. We did structural integrity this year. We did a lot on reconditioning, fatigue, osteoporosis. You know, we, we really covered a lot of subject matter. And that's what it could just be, is subject matter, in one ear and out the other. Uh, When I created the By Design program and the Lord led me to write what this show should be about, um, today, you know, I'm really going to talk to you guys about uh, starting what's called a wellness or a lifestyle journal. And and what that means is this past week I'm blogging on this as well at drprudian.com, which is my blog site. Um... If we don't create an action plan, um, how is anything, you know, ever going to be done? Uh, If you're going to have a house built, you would hire an architect to draw the plans of the house. The builder would need to understand the plans. I find it, you know, financially, same thing. We go to a financial planner who writes a plan. We go to our health care, I'm sorry, our insurance people, and they put together an insurance plan for our lives. And most of us have filing cabinets with all of this data written out and algorithms and flow charts. You know, think about your health. Next year, as you start the year, what is your health plan? Now, I don't mean about, I'm not talking about health plan like Obamacare or Blue Cross Blue Shield or Aetna, United Healthcare or Medicare, though that's health insurance. I'm talking about your specific health plan for you and your families. And we go back to the triad. That means the way we're going to exercise our bodies, the way we're going to feed the hole under our nose, that's our nutrition biochemistry. And what are we going to do with the noodle between the years? And that's our psychological health. And as we wake up each day and do our devotions, and the most important thing is our walk with God, then the next thing is let's turn to ourselves and create a health journal or a wellness journal to embark on on a wellness lifestyle. And the only way to do that is to create a plan. So we're going to start writing things down. And hopefully as your health educator or maybe one of your health educators, I've triggered off one or two things in your own personal life that you want to change. You want to make change, write it down. Let's take action steps to understand that we're dealing with bio-individuality. No one is going to do it for us. We have to go do it ourselves. And uh, just like our God gave us the blueprint for our life, and it's called the Bible, right? He designed it. It's right there. We're trying to do the same thing for ourselves in terms of a health care health plan for ourselves structured around more than just what we look like in the mirror or how much we weigh on the scale so let's let's do that let's let's all go to the store and and buy just a a journal and create it uh under stress you know under that psychological bucket let's start thinking about the things we can control and what we can't control and i think that you know if we're taking care of a uh, a sick family member and we cannot control that we could certainly control maybe getting away for a little bit an hour here and an hour there to get a massage or to do something passively for ourselves there is always something that we could be doing to enable our bodies to feel better function better and live quality disease-free years 
So under that banner, and if we're staying with the psychological and looking at our lives, I want to share a poem with you I found. Like I said, I was just kind of digging through uh, a lot of my um, uh, uh, folders that I have on my server at my office uh, where I store a lot of uh, you know personal as well as professional information. And I came across this thing. It's called Slow Dance, and maybe some of you have read this before let me read it to you have you ever have you ever watched kids on a merry-go-round or listened to the rain slapping on the ground ever followed a butterfly's erratic flight or gazed in at a sun into fading night you better slow down don't dance so fast time is short the music won't last do you run through each day on the fly when you ask how are you do you even hear the reply when the day is done do you lie in your bed with the next hundred chores running through your head you better slow down don't dance so fast the time is short the music won't last ever told your child we'll do it tomorrow and in your has in your haste not see his sorrow ever lost touch let a good friendship die, because you never had the time to call and say hi. You better slow down. Don't dance so fast. Time is short. The music won't last. When you run so fast to get somewhere, you must you miss half the fun of getting there. When you worry and hurry through your day, it, it is like an unopened gift thrown away. Life is not a race. Do take it slower. Hear the music before the song is over. You know, and as the year ends, it's a nice poem, and I know it's for me too, that in each one of our days, we need to find that time for ourselves. The time for ourselves, as my pastor Lloyd at Calvary Chapel teaches me, to be with the Lord. And also that time where maybe we have a hobby. Maybe we do something specifically for ourselves, whether it like myself, I'm a really bad guitar player, but <laughs> at 10 o'clock at night when the wife and the five kids are sleeping, maybe I'll find that 15 or 20 minutes alone in a room somewhere playing some really bad guitar. But and I use that as an example that we all have our thing to do. I think I learned it from my mom who knitted, and she still does. You know, and I'd see her, and it was her piece. It was her, it was her way of separation, and. This life that we live in our health is so dependent upon the stress that we place upon it. And I think that when we look at the fact that we're placing so much stress upon ourselves and you look at the science behind that, recently I was named to be on what's called the City Well Committee here in Long Branch, which is basically a wellness committee that represents the entire city of Long Branch. And my job this upcoming year in 2014 is that every city employee will be uh, my student. Basically, I am their health educator. So I, I launched the program this past couple of weeks doing some health workshops through my company, Wellness at Work. And one of the things that you know I, I shared with them, and I saw a lot of eyes just kind of open up wide, which is the fact that stress allows cholesterol, for instance, to embed itself into an inflamed artery. Now, you guys know what inflammation is now because you've heard me sp speak about it. And you have to be in a stressful state that allows the ability, what it does is it allows the body then to usher in the disease. Disease processes love to build upon themselves in a stressful state. So let's not give disease the opportunity to build itself in that stressful state. And I think that that poem represents, hey, a lot of life in, in the state of New Jersey. And as we embark on year end here and go into 2014, I think that our designer did not design us to do that. And I've shared with you in shows where I always go back to the farmer. You know, the farmer who didn't have any electricity, didn't have a car, you married the girl up the street, you had 10 kids, you woke up early, you used your body out in, 
you know, sunshine and cold weather and fresh air, and you work consistently throughout the day, home, ate your dinner, after dinner you walked around, you visited neighbors, you spoke, and you went to bed early. When we think about the way the body is designed, even from a hormonal perspective, our stress hormones are supposed to be the highest early in the morning because our designer designed our bodies to wake up ready to embark in under conditions of stress. They were not designed to be elevated late in the day. Why I see so many people as I drive through, as I drive down the street, I see the gyms, people are on treadmills at nine o'clock at night running miles. The body which wasn't designed to do certain things that we put it through. And I think from a stress perspective, we need to understand that. So, you know, we all grew up during different times. I might, you know, some of you guys listening to me out there, you might remember a time where, you know, having a car was only for the rich and famous. You know, I remember my dad would tell me stories like that growing up. Nobody had a car. But now, you know, when you look at various generations and as generations change, things change, we want to take a look at the way we were raised looking at the world we're in today. I know I was raised, you know, in the 70s. I was a kid in the 70s and running around the streets of Little Ferry, New Jersey, and I watch my children today. It's very different raising children. I came across another article that someone sent me, I don't know, a few years ago, and it's it's called To All the Kids Who Survived the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. They took aspirin, ate blue cheese dressing, tuna from a can, and didn't get tested for diabetes. Then after that trauma, our baby cribs were covered with bright colored lead paint, paint, lead based paints. Not that I advise that. We had no child proof lids on medicine bottles, doors or cabinets when we rode our bikes, and we had no helmets, not to mention the risks we took hitchhiking, hitchhiking, which again, I don't recommend. This is just supposed to be a sort of a joke, year-end stuff. As children, we would ride in cars with no seatbelt or ad bags. Riding in the back of a pickup truck on a warm day was always a special treat. We drank water from the garden hose and not from a bottle. We shared a soft drink with four friends from one bottle and no one actually died from this. We ate cupcakes, white bread, and real butter and drank soda pop with sugar in it. And we weren't overweight because we were always outside playing. We would leave home in the morning and play all day as long as we were back when the street lights came on. No one was able to reach us all day and we were okay. We spent we would spend hours building our go-karts out of scraps and then ride down a hill only to find out we forgot the brakes. After running into the bushes a few times, we learned how to solve the problem. We didn't have PlayStations, Nintendos, Xboxes, and no video games at all. There were no 99 channels on cable, no videotape movies, no surround sound, no cell phones, no personal computers, no internet, no inter- internet chat rooms. We had friends and we went outside and we found them. We fell out of trees, got cut, broke bones and teeth, and then there were no lawsuits from the accidents. We were all given BB guns on our 10th birthdays. We made up games with sticks and tennis balls, and although we were told it would happen, we not put we did not put out any eyes. We rode our bikes to our friend's house, knocked on the door, rang the bell, and just walked in and talked to them. And it goes on, and I just want to say to you, it says here, we had the freedom, failure, success, and responsibility, and we learned how to deal with it all. And the, some of the things I mentioned, I certainly am glad we have grown way out of like seatbelts and drinking soda. But if we look at that as an example, you know, life changes. And if, we're, if we, we are constantly in the state of flux, this constant state of transition, And I hope my show, in no matter what stage of life you are in, whether you're 20 years old, 40 years old, 60 years old, 80 years old, male, female, I speak to people. My job throughout my career is not caring so much as to the phase of life you're in when I'm speaking um, at a keynote or at a lunch and learn, but that we address humanistic factors that address all of us. And I think getting back to a simpler way of life, taking time for our friends and loved ones, while we focus on God's plan, not man's plan, would be a very good 
analogy mission for our health journal that I know all of you guys are going to go and buy. And as we embark on a new wellness lifestyle for 2014, and I start getting back into topical health issues like arthritis, and we're going to be doing some brain health and neurology next year. We're going to be doing carpal tunnel syndrome. We're going to be doing headaches. And I take apart all of this complex science for you. Never, ever lose perspective. The fact that we have a designer, we have a creator, and our job is to simply maintain this amazing miracle called human life. And taking a look at the various phases of life, which is why I shared the poem with you today, and this illustration about the kids who grew up in the 50s through the 80s, and some of the things that we didn't have. But I thank God every day, I did not have a cell phone as a kid. I thank God every day I didn't have a computer. I thank God every day that the, the four greatest words in the human language that have ever been created, go outside and play, was you know rendered to me every day by my mom and dad. Going outside and playing, creating relationships, looking someone in the eyes, knowing how to speak to them, and not having the ability to fall back on technology. It was one of the greatest gifts that God gave me as a young youngster running around the streets in the 1970s. And I think as we all embark on 2014, and I leave you this year, and I thank you for listening to me in 2013. It's been a blessing for me to do my show. I thank The Bridge and I, bring, I thank Tandem Radio for giving me this opportunity um, that may we make 2014 a better year. And I, I pray for all of you. And I really appreciate listening to the By Design Radio program. And if you need any more information about Dr. Prudy and my, myself or Prudy in Healthcare, please go to my website and have a blessed, safe Christmas. Enjoy your family and your friends. I know I'll enjoy my five children as they're ripping open boxes on Christmas morning. And have a wonderful, safe blessed 2014. Thanks for listening.